Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the True Brake Logitech Brake Pedal Mod, promising a load cell like experience when you're driving it. Made from a nicely CNC piece of aluminum and sporting a linear potentiometer, it looks to be able to deliver. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. So let's take a closer look at the True Brake pedal mod from AXC Sim. This is the box that you get it in. Not much to see there, obviously. What's important is what's inside the box. And we have the assembly itself. And we've got some other bits here for making adjustments on preload. Right, let's take a look at this thing. Now, this is not a cheap mod but neither are all the load cell mods I've ever seen for a Logitech or Thrustmaster pedal either. But when you take this out, this has got some weight to it, number one. <laughs> and when I first saw this, I thought it might be some kind of a plastic that's you know, got some chrome finish on it. But no, this is a solid piece of 6061 aluminum that's been CNC machined to fit the internals that we're gonna be using in here. And yeah, it's one of those things where you know, I, I do a lot of reviews here at the SRG and sometimes you, you look at the price of something and you pull it out of the box and you kind of wonder, well, geez, you know, it's, uh, that's a lot of money for what I'm looking at here. Uh, yeah, it's just, this is not that. <laughs> this is like, oh, okay, I see why it costs what it does because yeah, this is a beautiful CNC uh, finished piece here. I mean, the casing that's holding everything, it's really nice. Um, uh, another mod that I did to Logitech. Uh, what was it? The Rigmotech, I think. I mean, that's a pretty expensive load cell mod. And when I pulled that out, uh, you know, uh, the plastic puck with the load cell embedded in it and then a little circuit board, you kind of go, what? <laughs> but, you know, it worked fine. So anyway, but this is one of these things you, you, you pull out of the box and you go, hey, yeah, I can see where some of this money went. All right. They've got the AXC logo down there. And of course, this is bored out here because it will be on the bottom. That's how we're going to put this in. We're not going to take the top off part of the brake assembly over here. We're just gonna take the bottom out and then push this in and off you go. Now this has a linear position sensor in it or a linear potentiometer, if you will. And it's still a potentiometer. I know a lot of people are gonna raise their eyebrows and go, what? what? They say this is an electromechanical load cell. Well, it kinda is because the load cells, uh, brake pedals that we have are all based on pressure. How much pressure we're putting on the pedal relates to how much braking we're doing in our braking zone. So. It's all about pressure. And when you have the, the stock pedal over here on the Logitech or Thrustmaster or any potentiometer-based brake pedal, it's all based on position. There's some resistance. They have springs in them and rubber bumpers and things. But yeah, it's not like a load cell feels. It just doesn't feel the same. And they're out to replicate how a load cell feels, feels rather under braking. And also a hydraulic system is also a pressure-based pedal, just using hydraulics and a pressure sensor uh, to give you the same thing. So this is giving you, it's gonna be using a very, very stiff spring inside of here. And we'll see that once we get to the look inside. This, it's really hard to push this thing. I mean, you think you were pushing a load cell really in, in all practical purposes, because I'm putting my thumbs on here and I can barely move this thing. So of course my foot's gonna have more, be able to put more pressure on it, but it's not gonna move very much. And it's a, it's a very sensitive uh, linear position sensor in here so it doesn't take much movement for it to give you the range that you need to successfully brake your car accurately and repeatedly and consistently. That's what we're looking for. So yeah, that's what it's all about. And yeah, uh, you just hold this in your hand. It just, it's really nice. <laughs> and it's got some, looks like some kind of fiber reinforced tape here. And that's because when it's sitting uh, in the brake, that it's going to be moving up and down with the, the top brake sleeve going up and down on top of it. So I imagine that's what that, that's for. It's very slick, so it, it's, it'll give you some good smooth friction, I, I believe. It, that's what that's for, or give you no friction or less friction, not smooth friction. I don't even know if you can say that together. But yeah, it's uh, well designed just out of the box. You know, we got our electronics coming out of here. We've got four little bolts holding that in, which means we should be able to service this rather easily. It's got a spring snap ring in the top here. You guys can see that there. See those little holes there? It's holding this all together. And again, when we get to look inside, we'll see how all that's done. The plug is where we're going to be plugging our connectors in to make the connection to the brake pedal. And yeah, this has got a 3M piece of double-sided tape on it. 
so we can stick it to the case somewhere in there to keep our cable management done properly. And yeah, there's not a whole lot more to see here. It's just a nice piece though when you pull it out of the box. Again, it's just one of those things that, yeah, you can see where some of this money went. Now, let's look at the other bits, which are the same thing, really. These are also CNC'd aluminum bits. So nicely done here. You can see some of the CNC machining marks left in there, which I kind of like on the interior of a piece that's been machined out. You can even see the bit there, I think, the little circles in there the, where the bits were milling all that out. Nicely done. This is a polyurethane tip on here, which has a durometer of, I'm not sure. In fact, you know what we should do? Because they're all the same durometer, I'm only going to have to do this once. So I thought I'd just come over here and grab this while I'm thinking about it. Because usually I'll have this out already if I'm doing a brake pedal review or a pedal set review that has a brake pedal with, with the rubber bumpers in it. But yeah, this is about the same thing. So I thought I would just pull this out and see if I can let you guys see with the shore rating. They're all probably the same, I would imagine. It's just because it's, it does, this is more of a preload kind of thing. So yeah, it's pretty soft actually. Well, 72. I'm looking at like 72 here. All right, I don't know how you guys can see that. So 72. We'll try another one. Ah, look at that. That's like 84. And that's on a lower one. Let's see. This is one of the lowest ones here. They go in, and I'll show you that in a minute, how that works. That's also 84. I'm not sure I got that right on this one. Let me push harder on it. Maybe it's, yeah, there it is. Okay, 85. So they are the same. I can already say, why would that be 84? That's why we do this, so we can discover. <laughs> and there we have that. It's about 83. So they're about the same. Right. So the whole idea behind this is we put one of these on top of here. All right. Uh, the plunger. I'm calling this the plunger. I'm not sure what they call it. And it looks like that might be Delrin material, but we'll get a better look on the look inside. So this hollowed out piece here will fit on top of this like that. Very simple. Then we'll put our preload spring on top of that. And then this piece will go on top of everything. Now, if you notice on this piece, it has a kind of a triangle looking shape on it. And it's, it's actually machined in there. And what this is going to do, it's going to match over here on the brake pedal. The top part has embedded in the injection molded plastic piece, three fins like this. So this is going to fit in there so it won't twist. All right. So that's already done for you. So this piece is going to fit into the other end of our spring. As you can see, it's got a little puck left on it here after the machining and it fits in there just like that very nicely done all this is really nicely machined and yeah, the tolerances are very good here i'm pretty impressed by what's going on here so far so this will allow us to get, adjust the preload so how much i push on this before it makes contact with my bumper in there right that's that's the idea so here it's not pushing very much right before we hit it all right but we put a smaller one in there like this, and this is the smallest one, so I'm using that as an example. You can already see the gap we have there, right? So this one you can push a lot more. <laughs> so you can adjust the fuel you have, even though uh, the urethane durometers in here or the shore ratings are all the same. And it's a pretty good range of adjustment, I imagine. What I'm going to do is put these, I thought probably the best way to do this without spilling everything and trying to get this gives you a better idea and the representation of what's going on with these guys there you go so you can see we have less preload here in the maximum preload there and we can adjust in between very cool huh all cnc machined this is just a beautiful piece of kit really especially under the lights it's very shiny Whoa. <laughs> didn't want to do that right on the floor anyway so we're good here so there it is uh, anything else we can talk about here i don't think so the yeah we got the the shore rating on it and all we got to do now is let's see we got to install it obviously but before i install it i'm going to do a look inside segment and let's just see how this puppy is put together now we can take a look inside of this true brake assembly now this is not the one that you saw before because this has a white plug on it they actually sent me some parts that were had it open and i put it together just to see how it goes together and obviously i love doing that kind of stuff to see how how things are made and see the time and effort that is put into making these things come true as far as come to life so we can use them. So what I'm going to do is take this apart so we can see what it's made of. And you don't want to do this because this is calibrated at the factory by the guys at AXC, right? 
So yeah, you don't want to mess this up. But what I'm going to do here is first thing I'm going to do is take this snap ring off. Now, this plunger is actually threaded. It's got to roll away inside of this. And this, this must be Delrin because I don't know any other plastic that you can actually tap threads into and expect to last very long when you have this kind of pressure on it. It would just strip threads out in the plastic, but just it wouldn't be any good. So you can see there is a, what would I call a snap ring in there? A spring, snap spring ring, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's a spring-loaded type of steel in here. And you have to have, first off, before you do anything like this, you need to have the proper tools to do this correctly. Um, you might still be able to get it out with something else, but yeah, to do it with the right tool is, is a dream, and you need this. And that's what these are, snap ring pliers. You see, they got these little pieces on them here, right? That go down into those holes you just saw. And this is a compression one, so it squeezes it together like that. So it takes the spring pressure off and we should be able to pull it out, right? Now, there's different ones that actually start like this and you, you, you grab them like that and they actually spread out. So it depends on if you have an inner ring or an outer ring, which ones you need. And I have this little set here and... It's just, just, I don't even know how good this is. It seems to be a pretty good set, though. But that's all you need. It's just a basic set of these things. If you work on cars at all, this, this is like a worth their weight in gold when it comes time to have to use one. So, yeah, I don't know. that They've been lasting a while, so I don't have any problem with them. But, yeah, we're going to use the right one for this. So let's go ahead and get this snap ring out without any further ado. And I'm just going to put this, again, you can see the holes there. All right, so this is going to fit in those holes, and I'm going to squeeze it. So it takes the spring pressure off the ledge that's machined into the cylinder, and it should come out. <laughs> it should come out, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to do it on the lower part here first. And it can slip out sometimes, so you want to be careful what you're doing here. And I'm going to try to, you want to try to keep it as level as possible when you're doing this so one of the others doesn't want to pop out on you. So you squeeze it together, and then you should be able to get this thing out. There it goes. Ah, just like that. And slowly release it so it doesn't pop and go sailing across the room to never be found again. There it is. Cool, huh? All right, so now that we have that done, we're going to unscrew this. And this is a 1.5 millimeter hex shaft that is on this linear potentiometer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw in as far as clockwise. So I'm screwing this in so it kind of pushes it out, right? Now, there's a spring pressure under here, so that's why this has threads in it. So this thing's still under pressure, and I'm just going to screw it in until it comes out. And by the time it comes out, the spring pressure should have been released enough so it doesn't go flying anywhere. That's the theory anyway, so let's see what happens. <laughs> and these are very fine threads, so yeah. Let's see what's going on here. All right. As I continue to push it in, and there it goes. It's starting to come out now. See how it's getting this edge here of the plastic is getting very close to the edge of the machine piece of aluminum. So I just keep doing that, make sure I'm seated properly in there because I can't see what I'm doing. And it keeps threading out, threading out, threading out, and it's relieving pressure on that spring in there. It has a lot of pressure on it, which gives it that load cell feel when we're pressing on it. But now I can feel it's looser already. So I think uh, mission accomplished here. I think I can slide this out now. There we go. Ah, perfect. So here is the, what I'm calling the plunger. I'm sure I'm calling it the wrong name, whatever they want to call it. But yeah, this seems to be like a very hard Delrin type of plastic that's machinable. And you can see that it's got, I don't know how well you're going to see it, but it actually has threads machined into that hole. It's been tapped, in other words. Let's see that. Maybe you can see it, I don't know. But obviously, the threaded rod on this potentiometer, linear potentiometer, would not work if it wasn't. So anyway, very nice piece. It's just like everything in this assembly, it's just well done. I mean, again, it's one of those things that you can see where your money is spent. Now, here is the spring that's inside of there. Now, this is like a very, very, I can't even attempt to compress this spring with my fingers. It's like a valve spring. That's what it looks like to me, some kind of a valve spring for a head. It's been cut down. You can see where they cut it and then ground it down and then smoothed it out so it wouldn't grab onto anything sharp. Very well done. I mean, just the little things like that. They sanded this down or, or smoothed it out so it 
it won't even cut my finger. I mean, I've fully expected most of these things when you do that, they've got jagged edges on them, and yeah, you have to be careful. Right, so there's the spring. We have the plunger. We have the snap ring, or locking ring. And there's the potentiometer. All right, it's down inside of there. Now, I am hesitant to take it out, but you know what? This is the one they let me have, so I am going to unscrew that and see if it'll just easily come out. If not, I'm not going to force it. So that's all I can do at this point. So I'm going to take these four, and these are 1.5 millimeter too. It's a little teeny socket head cap <laughs> screw. I guess you know, you can see that, but yeah. Little teeny guys. Again, all this is, is very well done, though. It's very precise. I mean, it reminds me of like working on a watch or something. So let's go ahead and take these out. And this has got a little piece here on, that is some kind of a keeper. And that looks like some kind of a Delrin plastic, too. So that's a keeper that holds this in, part of the cable. See that cable's kind of sitting out there. So now we'll go ahead and take these others out. And I would imagine, if anything, it's going to pull through, but then it's not going to pull through all the way. They may have put this on, put this on after the, they've threaded it through this assembly. So I'm guessing that might not come out like that. But I'm going to try. You know, we have to try. All right, so I do have it loose. And that's just another cover in there, it looks like. Let's see if I can get that to come out for you. Yes, it is another cover. And it kind of slots in. See, this cover kind of goes in like, well, hard to show you. But this one is shaped like this. So it kind of goes up inside of the cylinder and then you screw it down. And I just lost a screw, but I'm sure I'll find it because it's hit my rubber down there. And usually it doesn't go far when it does that. So here's the linear potentiometer hanging loose. And I, I guarantee you, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this out of here, is there? I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to actually kind of thread the cable through as I pull on it gently, ever so gently. And yeah, this is, again, I'm, I can only try. No guarantee it's going to work. Oh, there we go. Ah, bingo. All right. So there it is. And there we can see, I don't know if you can see the model number on there well enough, but there it is. And you can see it's a linear potentiometer. See how that works? So this is the sensor part of it. So it's measuring or sensing how far that rod is moving inside of the housing. Just like that. Now this is a definitely a very precise way to measure the distance the rod has traveled or the position of this rod, right? And you can see the threaded shaft here. And that's what goes inside of this guy, right? So it holds down the, the pressure on the spring until we can get our lock ring in there to secure everything so it doesn't go, it takes the pressure off of only the threads in this part holding all that spring pressure down. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. <laughs> all right, so we see how it uh, is made. And again, everything in here is just, just so well done. And so much thought and work and quality control has gone into this. You can tell just by looking at it that, yeah, I'm impressed of how they made this. This is not just a, you know, yeah, like I said before, it's one of those things when you get it in hand, and especially when you take it apart and look at the parts, that you can see that it wasn't just done, you know, haphazardly and, you know, they didn't take a lot of shortcuts here. They wanted this thing to work perfectly all the time and, yeah, I think they, they accomplished what they set out to do here. Right. So I'll get the, all this put back together, and I guarantee it'll still work. <laughs> all I got to do is find my little screw that went running away from me. But I, I pretty much I can see that already. So, yeah. So that's how it works. Pretty simple, huh? So, yeah, it, with the pressure of that spring, which is very, very high-pressure spring, you do get that load cell-like feel because you're just using, it's not traveling very far, this, this linear a potentiometer is not traveling very far so to give you the braking information as far as where the brake pedal is. So less distance but a lot more pressure is the same concept of a hydraulic or a load cell sensor. So that's what they went after and of course we're going to have to test it obviously once we install it into the pedals and then once we test it we can see just how well they came off of this. But yeah everything is, is such a well-made kit here. All these bits are really 
top flight looking stuff to me anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed what I see so far. Now we can go through the installation process of the True Break mod. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward also. And yeah, they actually have a video on their website on how to do this. But mine's going to be a bit longer than theirs because I take the time to explain exactly what I'm doing for better or worse. Anyway, first thing we got to do is take these pedal faces off. And there are six bolts in here are screws and they are flathead. And yeah, this one over here is missing because I actually stripped it out one time. I can't remember when it was, but I stripped it out. This, these are very soft from Logitech. Now, I wish they had some harder or better screws in here because I was doing it with a hand, tightening it up, and somehow it, it stripped it out. I'm not sure exactly how. But anyway, I use another M4, and that's what these are, M4 bolt here that goes in there. But it's a socket head cap because I, can't, I haven't found a flathead yet that was long enough. See how long that's got to be to get in there? Anyway. So, yeah, that's why it's missing in case you're looking at it going, hey, isn't he missing a screw? Because <laughs> I know somebody's going to say that. All right, so what I'm going to do is just pull these faces off, and this is a 2.5 millimeter size of a hex on here, and some of these are pretty long. I think the throttle is a short one, but we'll go ahead and pull these off and see what that looks like. So as these faces come off, there's two pieces to this. And you just want to be mindful of that because it will drop right out from underneath on you. And you can see that these are pretty long M4 screws. And there's the flathead, right? There's just not a lot of metal on a flathead screw to begin with. So it makes them kind of fragile, if you will, when you're turning them, kind of like a button head. The best ones are the socket head caps, but of course these give us clearance so we can use our socks. <laughs> anyway, so we got two of these. They're pretty long, but not quite as long. And you want to pay attention to this as you're taking them off. Or are they the same? I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're the same. So these are all the same. There's, these are about 25 millimeters long. But when we get over to the throttle pedal, and by the way, while I'm showing you that, see how this just drops out? So expect that to happen. Nothing broke. It's just put it back in there when you bolt it back up. Easy. And we'll go ahead and pull the throttle off here. And yeah, see, these are only like 15 mil long. Kind of short. Because it's a short pad here on that lever. Right, so that's all there is to it. That's pretty easy, huh? So what we're going to do now is flip this over and take the screws off the back. Now we got to pull the plate off the bottom of this unit. And of course the plate extends down to here. This is not part of the bottom plate. And it goes all the way to the front up here. We've got a lot of screws to take out of here. There are all Phillips, thankfully. <laughs> we've got four here. We've got four across there. We've got two on each corner up here. Two on the front lip. And we've got two that are hidden. Kind of, sort of, our carpet bar here, underneath our carpet bar. You see the screw there? And we got another one over there, right? Easy to get to, though, once you know they're there. If you don't know they're there, you could probably try to take this off and wonder what's wrong. We also have, let me turn around this way so you guys see it better, screws that we're going to take out of the bottom of the pedals themselves. So when we pull this off, the pedals don't come with it because we don't want them to. So we got a pair here, and we got a pair over here. And the same goes for every pedal there is and that's the accelerator throttle so this is the brake and over here these four are for the clutch but we're going to take all those out it doesn't matter the order you take these out it really doesn't matter as long as you get them all out and that's a lot of screws to take out and we're going to use the box tool to help us with this and this is a box tool <laughs> and it just lets the pedal set sit down in there without pushing up on the pedal levers so when we're undoing the screws these pedals aren't trying to force them way out on the plate here. And typically you get one you can just set them in, but because of the shape of this, it can be a little slidey. So what I usually do is just do this. Put the edge down in here, and then when I set it down, it's all the way down in here, right? But I'm not getting any pressure on my pedal levers and they're pushing against this. So you're achieving the same purpose. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull all these out. And if, I'm not sure if I'm gonna show you the video for this, but if I do, it'll be sped up so you guys don't have to sit there and watch me do this in real time.
All right, so I think we got them all out. Just do a visual check here real quick. And yeah, I think so. Now, of course, the idea is to be able to pull this plastic panel off and be careful when you do this. In fact, I'll just put this back up here when I do it so you guys can see it better. And yeah, everything should be sticking into the bottom of this tray by gravity, holding it in. So I'm gonna see if I can pry up on this. It comes right up and yeah, everything is looking good so far. And I'm going to gently pull this off. Now, also the reason we do it this way is because there's no wires attached to this part of the panel. All our wiring is up here, like that. Now, these pedals are loose now, okay? So I want to be careful with what I'm doing. So all I'm going to do is I want to pull this brake pedal out so I can work on it. And to do that, go ahead and take this out and hold it here. I need to detach, see how loose these things are. I need to pull these off of the brake pedal, right? Because see this wire here? Now I could probably just take the brake pedal and rotate it out with the wire still attached. But let's see how that works. Get rid of my box here for a second. And I'm going to just pull this out and rotate it around like that. But the problem is now that I have this done like this, my other pedals are going to come up a little bit, but you can kind of lay it there and it's going to be all right. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. Looks like one of them came off as I pulled it off anyway. And you can use a pair of pliers or you can just use your fingers and usually they'll just come off with your fingers. But there is one wire that will not and that's a ground wire down here. See this piece here? Okay, that's going to have to be taken off with a Phillips. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take my ground wire loose and you don't want to hurt your ground wire because you're going to need it later on. <laughs> All right, so here's our brake pedal, all right? And of course, I've showed you guys this in the review I did on it. Let's go. You can see the gears down in there, and it's attached to this rotary potentiometer, the normal type of potentiometer. And of course, when we push the brake pedal, it registers what it can or cannot do. All right, so now what we're going to do is take this apart and put the new true brake system in. So everything's out, and now we can install our true brake mod. And the only thing between us and that is this bolt right here <laughs> and a 10 millimeter nut. Easy enough to get this off. And we're just going to pull the whole thing out when we do that. And I am going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Make sure I'm going the right way here. And yeah, put my 10 millimeter wrench on there. Put our little handy dandy Milwaukee on here and boom. There we go. So there's our 10 millimeter nut. Go ahead and get these guys out of the way now. Won't be needing those for a minute. And this is has the nylock type of nut on it. You can see that there? Little blue stuff. Keep things from vibrating loose, which is a good thing. And now we're just going to kind of take some of the pressure off of this and slide this bolt out. And you can see this is a solid shank bolt, so which is a good thing. See how thick that is? And then there's the threads there. These look like M6 threads. And yeah, we have the socket head cap on the top. And this is a five millimeter, in case you were wondering, hex head size on the top of this socket head. Right, so we'll put those aside and we won't lose them. And we just pull everything out. It kind of, kind of falls out, really. So we got our spring, we got our rubber bumper in there that you normally see in here, but we won't need any of this stuff. So we're just gonna put it off to the side. Now, I'm looking in here and there is what I thought was gonna be in here. How could I get it fall out? Doesn't look like it at the moment. Now this, might be. Let me see if I, what we're going to do here. I'm going to get a pair of needle nose. Because there's a white plastic piece in here. And it's sitting on these three fins that this cap is supposed to lock into. All right. So I think the instruction of the video you saw, if you go to YouTube and see what that is, doesn't really mention this. And I'm not sure if this is actually going to come off like I think it should. So there we go. Huh, it did come off. There it is. This little white cap piece here that uses these grooves here to lock into that, to the fins that we have on the bottom here. I don't know how we're going to see that. There they are. See them? Cool. So we're going to take this part that is the cap for our spring with its grooves, and we're going to kind of look at it as we're putting it in. And I'm thinking that I might have to turn it a little bit to get it to fall into those grooves, but we'll see how this works out 
once I get it in there. Look at that. Awesome. Fell right in. All right, so now those fins in there are securely locked into the grooves that were machined into our piece of aluminum. Cool. All right, now I'm going to take my spring and kind of drop that in there. See if I can center it. And there it is. Man, this is easy. Now, here's, the, here's where we have to make a decision. And that is, what are we going to use for our preload? Or how much free space I'll have as I press the pedal before I engage the urethane bumper on the tip here. And because I've tested a lot of pedals here at the Sim Racing Garage, I kind of know where I want to be. And based on what I was testing before, I was looking at how far the spring moves. I'm going to go with this guy here. All right. And what I'm going to do is put it on the top of the little plunger piece here. All right. Now I want to put this so the, the wire piece that I'm looking at is going to be on this side where the potentiometer is. So I'm going to make sure that's over there. So that when I put this back in, the pedal goes back in, it's going to be in the proper place where all the wires need to be. So I'm just going to kind of put this in here like that. And it could be easier, right? So now all I have to do is see if I can get the bolt back in. So we'll put this in here. I might have to put some pressure on this to get this to work. But it doesn't look like much, yeah. I'm not having to put much pressure at all on the back of this piece to get it lined up with our holes in here, at least from what I can see. So I'm going to go ahead and... See if that'll go through there, and it goes through like a champ. And there it is. Beautiful. Man, this is easy, huh? So I'm going to go ahead and put my 10 millimeter nut back on, and we're going to make some more noise as I tighten this back up. So here we go. Okay. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a turn here just to make sure that I have it put tightly on. And that's good. That should be perfect. All right. I don't need these guys anymore. We'll put them off to the side. And there we have it. Well, that was easy, huh? And you can see how this slick tape that they have on here, that fiber reinforced stuff that you saw before, is going to be riding on this as we push down on it on the pedal. And this is how much free, I've just got a little bit of free before I'm actually contacting the urethane bumper, which in turn, its aluminum housing is pressing on the little piece in there that's actually pushing down on the potentiometer. Yeah, I think that, and you can see it doesn't travel much. Of course, it's just my arm. My feet are going to be able to put more pressure than that on it. But it's certainly not uh, traveling that much. And that's what we're talking about. Once I get to that point where I'm making contact with it, right about there, and now it's all about how much pressure that I'm putting on this pedal, not the distance that the pedal lever is traveling, although it is traveling a small distance, but it's more about the pressure now, based on how much pressure I'm putting on it, just like a load cell or another pressure system like hydraulic. So now we're actually going to be feeling the pressure. This is a totally different pedal, by the way, than the, the G25, 27, or 29, or 920, pedal sets, brake pedal. This is totally different. I mean, this is, and it feels good, actually. It doesn't feel like you're just hitting a brick wall and there's nothing left. There's still some give there. So it feels pretty good to the hand anyway, but we have to wait till we get in there and see how well it works for us. All right. So we're going to take this and flip this back into the case this way. So this is going to be on this side, right? My potentiometer, where I need to connect all my wires at, or not my wires, but these wires need to be on that side. So when we connect this thing, here's how we're going to do it. The plug here, you can see it has a white and a red and a black wire in it. All right. Correspondingly, we have the same thing over here. We have a black, white in the middle, and then a red wire. And of course, with this black wire, we have this ground wire that needs to be put back on the pedal like when we took it off. So what we're going to do is actually just do this. We're going to go red to red. White to white and black to black. Couldn't be simpler. And let's see, I'll start with the black first. And we're just sliding it on to the little pieces that are already in there, made to accept these terminations that we have already on here. And yeah, next is going to be white. Pretty easy stuff. You just want to push it down until you feel a little snap. And that should secure it. And let's see. 
take this back off. I put the red on the white. You gotta be careful how you're doing this. Because <laughs> you don't want to do that, obviously. And sometimes you want to use pliers to get these things back off. There we go. All right, so now I'll put the white in the middle, not the red. There we go. You know, feel a little snap in there and you're good to go. One more. Now we're going red to red like we should have to begin with. And there it is. So you want to check that. Take a, Do a little visual. See if I can slide this up a little bit so you guys see this a little better. Yeah, you want to do a little vis visual check here and make sure that you've got red to red, white to white, and black to black. All right? Which we do here, which is good. So now I'm just going to take this thing and flip it back towards the casement here. Let it rest right there. And it's in the general position that these guys are in, right? Now i got to figure out what I want to do with my wire. One thing I know I have to do, in fact, let me do that before I flip it back in. I probably should have done that already, is get my ground wire secured to the brake pedal again. So let's slide these guys back a little. Get these out of the way. And remember, it was a Phillips head screw where my black wire, ground wire was mounted. I just got to do a little cable management here. I'm going to flip this around, take a look at what I'm doing here, where everything's going. Try to make sure that I'm not getting any of these wires in a bind. And yeah, I'll just flip this around. And remember my screw for the ground wire is over here. I had it over here in my little magnetic dish where all the rest of the screws are. So I don't lose any of them. There's so many, it's good to have a dish for this kind of operation. Because it would be easy to lose one, and then what are you going to do, right? <laughs> Got to go to the hardware store and find another one. All right, so I'm just going to get this screw started. If I can. Let's see, there it is. Nope, that's not it. These can be a little fiddly when you're doing this stuff. But we're going to get it done. Come on, you can do it. I know you came out of there. Interesting. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm need a little. I'm also going to have a little slack here. So I'm when I'm I'm going to be able to take this 3M sticker off of here and stick it on the housing on the top here once I flip it in. But right now I'm just interested in getting the ground wire secured so I don't have to mess with it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'll usually put my finger on this to keep it from spinning because it tends to want to spin when you screw this all the way in. Once it hits and grabs this connector it wants to kind of spin it a little bit. So if you don't want it to spin, which I'm kind of thinking maybe I want it hanging that way, but maybe not. And it's one of those things you just got to make a judgment call. Go ahead and tighten it down. Okay. Nice and secure. Our ground wire is good. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and take this 3M piece, the other piece of this double-sided tape off, just because I don't have to get in here and do it once I flip this thing around. So that's what I'm going to do is kind of flip it gently in here. I'm watching my cable management while I'm doing all this to make sure i got plenty of room. I'm not going to cause any damage or put anything in a bind unnecessarily. Yeah, there we go. And my yellow plug, I'm going to put it right down in here. I can see a perfect spot for it without pulling these wires too much because I don't want them to get out of sorts where they're supposed to be. All right. Press it down against the plastic, and I'm done. And there are some wire guides in here that you can kind of press down or make sure that you're not hitting anything. And, and then we got the wire guides down here that you can pop your wires back into if you want to, to keep everything nice and neat. Little looms. This one goes over there. Okay, looking good. Now, when you put this cover back on, you have to remember that there you need to get this wire into this channel here because that's our, our connector that goes to the wheelbase. I'm going to be using a USB connector, though. So anyway, one of those Leo Bodner ones, I did a review on that later on. But there's another counter piece to this over here molded into the plastic right here. See that? It's got a little groove in it. Yeah, that's going to fold down on top of that. So you want to be mindful of that when you put this back on and make sure this clears properly. Watch it. All right, so... Yeah, that's about it. Now all I have to do is pick this up and I'll put this back in my box tool <laughs> and very gently kind of maneuver that over there because as I pick it up, I want these pedals to drop back into their positions where they should be and usually they'll do that by themselves and there they go. All right, nice and neat.
And I'll keep this kind of hanging here like this. And I will put this back in the box. There we go. They settled a little bit. No, pre no big deal. No reason to panic. <laughs> all right. So it's back safely in my box now. So all I have to do is reinstall my plate like so. Get all my screws in, obviously. And when I'm doing that, I'm actually checking for the screws on these pedals, how they're lining up as I'm pushing this plate back on. I just want to make sure everything looks like it's supposed to when I put it in. And it does. Everything's lining up perfectly. So now it's just a matter of reinstalling all my screws. And again, I'm paying attention. Let me put this around so you can see it. I'm going to be paying careful attention to this so that I don't put this wire in a bind here. Kind of looking down there, making sure down inside it's not binding against anything. It's clear everywhere. And then I'll slowly get this thing to go back on. Be careful, careful. There we go. So the screws will pull this down tight. And you can see how this is kind of pinching the wire. So it's acting as a kind of a cable gable, if you will. So if you pull on it, it won't pull on the electronics inside. So just be mindful of it. That's really the only thing you really got to kind of be mindful of when you're putting all this stuff back together. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and screw everything together. And then I'm going to put my Bodner USB cable on here and do a little testing and make sure the brake pedal still works because if it doesn't, I'm going to have to take it all apart and figure out why. <laughs> I'm sure it will though. As you can see, I now have the G29 pedals mounted to my pedal plate over here that I'm going to be using as my test bed. And this is a heavy duty direct drive wheel stand from Next Level Racing. So it is a very solid unit once you have a wheel and everything weighted down on it and it's got these nice sticky pads so it should be able to support me pushing down on this pedal because as you might imagine now it's going to be a lot more pressure to be applied to this pedal because we're dealing with a pressure-based assembly now so anyway i just want to show you guys how i'm mounting this now i will be using my bodner usb adapter for this operation because number one, I'm not using the steering wheel, the Logitech steering wheel, but most importantly, I'm bypassing the firmware that is in that Logitech steering wheel wheelbase, which has, as you guys might know, uh, with the G29s and the 920s, they have a firmware curve on their brake pedal uh, software firmware in there. So it's a nonlinear curve, in other words. It, it's an aggressive curve after a certain pedal travel distance measured on the old potentiometer that we had in there before that we're not running now. So I'm going to bypass that curve so I have a nice linear brake pedal, which I would do anyway because I don't like that way that firmware works on these Logitech pedals. But then again, that's subjective, personal preference, and I just want a linear straight line curve, or <laughs> no curve actually, just a linear uh, line when I'm using my brake pedal because that's how I can brake consistently and accurately. But anyway, we'll be using that and it'll be a USB hookup. So other than that, yeah, we're ready to go. This is nice stout tray that it's melt mounted to, rather. Not melted to. It might be melted after we use it. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, nice and stout, so I don't have any problems uh, thinking that I won't be able to get enough pressure on it. And I have, <laughs> you can see I have my rolling chair here captured with the strapping here, so it won't go anywhere when I'm having to push on that pedal. Right, so there it is mounted. Now all we have to do is get in and do some testing. So here we are in iRacing, as usual, at Sebring, and we are in the Ferrari 488 GT3, the usual testing baseline. First off, you'll notice that there's a lot less movement in the stock, or rather from the stock Logitech pedal, as there is now. And you can see, and I've got a pretty heavy braking zone coming up uh, after this turn, where I have a lot of uh, speed and, and we're shaving a lot of speed off, bleeding a lot of it off in a very short distance and you'll see about the max there is as far as the travel here. And if not here, then certainly at the hairpin after this little S section of S turns here. But yeah, you can see it's not moving very much because there's a lot of, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it and it's just not moving that much because it doesn't have the range and it's feeling, I'm, I'm breaking by pressure here. I'm not breaking by how far I push the pedal down. It feels like a load cell. And uh, I know they call it electromechanical load cell or something <laughs> in their marketing, but yeah. It's, it's not a load cell, apparently, obviously. But it's doing the job the same way a pressure-oriented system like a load cell or a, a hydraulic-based system with their pressure sensors are doing the same thing. But this is using a linear uh, position sensor or potentiometer and instead of a load cell, obviously, or a pressure switch. Now, this 
you got to understand these potentiometers, you know, potentiometer number one is not a bad word. It, it's not the greatest uh, solution in these low end brake pedal sets or pedal sets with, you know, the brake pedals that have potentiometers on them because they're just the rotary type and they're nothing special and they tend to get gather dust and other issues that they, uh, you know, have. And of course, it's all about uh, muscle memory when you're braking with that kind of system. But here, because we're not pushing it very far and it's a very sensitive uh, linear potentiometer they're using in this system, yet yeah, it's, it's all based on pressure at this point, just like if you had a load cell or if you had uh, a hydraulic type system in here with a pressure switch. So it feels just like, not just like, but it feels the same kind of pressure situation when I had the Rickmotec load cell mod and this same set of pedals that I took off to put the true brake mod on. And yeah, other than that, but it has a little bit better feel in my opinion than the Rickmotec because obviously if you watched the look inside and how we can adjust the, uh, the throw on this pedal as far as the preload, um, there's more adjustability in here so you can fine tune it better to what you like to feel underfoot. And I was able to do that with this system. So I was able to, after you know, using it for a little bit, come up to speed to where it was all pressure related as far as what I'm doing with my foot to get the car to do what I want it to under the braking conditions. And yeah, it worked like a champ there. I mean, it just, it does exactly what they say it does. And I'm, I'm not that surprised after, you know, once you take something apart and you have it in your hand and you're looking at the way it's made, I could see where, you know, it all came together for me as looking at what they were trying to do and how they did it. And I think that it's pretty brilliant the way they came up with this. I mean, they could have just used a load cell, you know, put it in some plastic and threw a, you know, a piece of rubber in there and say, there you go. And, you know, of course, on the amplifier board. But yeah, they didn't do it that way. We've got some really nice machine bits. I mean, again, it, it shows the value of what you're spending on this, I think, compared to other solutions out there. <laughs> they cost actually a, a, lot, a considerable amount more. But anyway, getting the job done here, it's nice to be able to use your Logitech brake pedal as a pressure type of pedal instead of the potentiometer long throw deal that we had before. And of course, not only that, but now I'm using it in the USB uh, adapter from Leo Bodner. So I'm bypassing the wheelbase firmware curve on that brake pedal completely. So now I have a nice linear curve and it's, it's a much better feeling pedal. So my braking is very consistent with this setup compared to when you're just using the potentiometer, especially when you're running it through the uh, the G29 wheelbase itself and that firmware add-on that Logitech was so nice to give us. <laughs> All right, so that's about it. Not much else to see here. You know, it's working like a champ. I put a few hours on this and didn't have any problems with it. Um, yeah, it's just doing what it's supposed to do. So I guess we'll just go ahead and get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the True Brake Logitech brake pedal mod kit from the guys at AXE Sim. This kit takes a different approach than others that I've tested before. Using a sensitive linear potentiometer to deliver the same result you would see from other pressure based systems that are currently used in sim racing brake pedals. The materials and production methods used here are all top flight bits. Starting with the CNC machine 6061 aluminum body, you can tell that AXC Sim wanted their product to stand the test of time. The Born's linear potentiometer used here has a very liquid smooth movement to it, which conveys a quality feel. The stiff inner spring gives this unit a stiff, short pedal stroke under use, which allows the user to navigate braking requirements by the amount of pressure applied rather than how far you've pressed the brake pedal. The four machined aluminum pucks sporting the polyurethane bumpers allow you to adjust the pedal's preload or take-up distance by selecting between their different heights and then inserting them in the spring stack that provides this function. Even the top cap that captures the three fins in the top of the brake pedal's top piece has been machined from the same aluminum stock. Much better solution than a rubber hose with slots cut into it. Installation is very easy compared to other load cell solutions available, so you should be up and running in short order. When driving the true brake, I was able to initiate braking by sensing the amount of pressure it took to get the desired result just as advertised and like other pressure based braking solutions, which in turn makes braking very consistent. And this is exactly what you want from a brake pedal. At $62 plus shipping, this is one of those products that seems to justify the amount of money spent as soon as you take it out of the box. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. 
don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.